Hello everyone, welcome to my video review of another full HD display from BenQ, the VZ2350HM 23 inch monitor using IPS technology. I am using this for more than 5 weeks and see now as the right time to share my thoughts about this monitor. This monitor is now priced a lot cheaper than when it is launched 3 years ago and I find it very reasonable when looking at the features, especially the IPS panel used in this model. Through this video, I will analyze every important aspect of PC monitor for this model and also simultaneously compare it side by side with a PLS panel monitor with respect to color accuracy, viewing angles and gaming performance. It's a full 23 inch 16 is to 9 aspect ratio widescreen with 1920 by 1080 resolution and that gives a pixel pitch size of 0.265 mm which is the distance between each individual pixel. Such smaller distance between pixels will produce much sharper content on the screen and I always feel the 23 inch as the right size for full HD resolution translating to a tightly packed 95.78 pixels per inch and with that you are going to enjoy crisper texts images compared to a 24 inch 1080p display. Maximum brightness is up to 250 candles. IPS displays tends to be less brighter than VR panels and it is much evident with this 1000 is to 1 contrast ratio. Whereas a VA panel monitor starts at 3000 is to 1 in this aspect. BenQ has employed AHIPS panel type for this model. This AHIPS advanced high performance in plane switching is one of the version of IPS family and stated as an improved version in terms of color accuracy over other IPS panel types. And I personally like this variant for its better text and picture clarity without asking too much of money. 14 millisecond black to white response time. Though ok for gaming, hardcore gamers should note this. Covers 72% of NTSC color gamut. So this display will not be suited for professional grade color editing jobs. Still you can see better colors if you are coming from poor TN monitors. Comes with inbuilt stereo speakers. The output quality is nothing special and is very low in sound intensity. But I consider it as a good feature to use under emergency case or in a complete silence environment. Power consumption is at 35 watts when maximum brightness is used. Inside the box we get a D sub cable, HDMI cable but this one is optional in some countries. Power cord, it's a type B connector and you may require an additional adapter if this shape doesn't suit your plug type and the audio cable. The power circuit is built inside the monitor and it doesn't require an external power brake like this. Body construction is completely plastic. The plastic strip on top and side corners of the screen are glossy and rest of the cabinet surface is done with soft matte finish. As you can see the fingerprints are visible slightly. The build quality is quite satisfying doesn't look cheap anywhere for this price point and I didn't see any unwanted panel gaps across the body. It features frameless design with thin bezels measuring just 1cm from the actual display area and a brushed aluminium lining at the bottom bezel provides a premium touch to the overall design. The monitor aesthetics is well enough to enhance the workspace area and the frameless design will certainly appeal a large group of consumers. The screen surface is coated with hard matte finish and it diffuses the reflections to big extent. But you are going to observe this AZ effect if there is a really strong light source in front of the screen. The major downside of matte surface is you will lose some of the color vibrancy and contrast that you get in glossy screen and also the screen look to be little grainy when reading texts. The stand is built using solid plastic and base part is square shape and not much wide unlike other BenQ models I have seen. The vertical stand part has an aluminium finish that fakes like metallic and it adds as a nice aesthetic touch to the overall design. The screen wobbles a lot every time when accessing the on-screen menu buttons or adjusting its tilt angles. The stand has adjustments only for vertical tilting and obviously we can't expect height adjustment feature for this price. This is the extreme angle tilted downwards and the maximum tilt upside. And another concern I add with this monitor is the height from the desk surface to the bottom edge of the screen is very less. But it's not a major deal breaker 
as you can increase the height by keeping some books under the base or while mounting the monitor or even adjusting your seating height if possible. We got Visa mounting holes facility for wall mounting the monitor. To go with that, all the connection ports are faced downwards to ease wall mounting. Otherwise, it's annoying to connect the input cables and the monitor is placed on desktop. This model has got nice selection of input ports. From the left, HDMI, DVI-D interface, D sub port, and finally 3.5mm audio line in jack. In case if you like to use the built in speakers when using VGA input as it does not carry the audio signal. Kensington lock for securing the monitor to the disc. All the control buttons are placed under the right bottom bezel and as respective labels on the front bezel. Buttons are very responsive to use and we got dedicated keys for volume control and picture mode presets. But I very much prefer brightness or contrast button in place of this picture preset option. And the sad thing, you cannot reassign these buttons to other functions using the inbuilt menu. Once setting up a monitor, you need to press the auto button to select the desired input source and then press the menu button to confirm it. Since this model has trouble selecting the connector input source by itself. This is the main menu through which you can adjust brightness, contrast, basic color corrections and response time enhancement. And these are the sum of predefined color temperature modes of which I find standard and internet presets to be pretty useful. This model doesn't have the BenQ's low blue light feature but still you can achieve that using the text preset which greatly reduces the blue intensity. Unfortunately, BenQ doesn't include gamma control with this model. It uses direct current method to control brightness, so backlight is PWM free. As a result, there will be no flickering at any brightness level with this BenQ monitor. You can notice the screen fluctuation in the reference display that employs pulse width modulation method when brightness is reduced from 100%. BenQ claims less eye strain and fatigue with this flicker free feature and this may appeal to people who have big trouble with such flickering. This flicker free advantage is becoming a standard feature across all BenQ monitor range in recent times. And from now, I am going to compare this BenQ IPS monitor to a PLS panel and show you which is best in terms of color accuracy, viewing angles, gaming capability and finally give you a conclusion which one to choose. And I am sorry about the size mismatch as I don't have a 23 inch PLS display to compare with while creating this video. I also request you to see this video in IPS or VA panel display to witness the difference or else you have no option other than following my words. PLS is a technology created by Samsung to compete with IPS. PLS technology is said to be Samsung's version of IPS and has the same advantages and negatives of IPS. Let's find out if this is true. Brightness and contrast levels are set at same values on both monitors and I also tuned the color settings to get the best of both panels before starting the comparison. I found the factory color calibration of BenQ VZ2350 is very good, requiring very minimal correction during my calibration process. The color reproduction of BenQ display is simply outstanding, producing quite accurate colors with right amount of saturation. It rendered skin tones faithfully on the screen. And the most interesting thing is, PLS gave very similar performance in color representation, matching the IPS with almost no difference. Color quality from both panels is equally good and is well enough to satisfy content creators as well as regular users coming from cheap TN displays. I am including this shot comparing the IPS with the VA panel monitor and you can see the colors are less accurate and lacks the vibrancy on the VA panel display. Viewing angles, the major strength of IPS panel is again proved here. The performance of both panels is impressive and identical and contents are visible from every side with minimal color distortion. There is some contrast brightness loss at extreme angles in both monitors and I find the PLS is slightly better than IPS in this regard. Otherwise, color consistency is very respectable in both panels.
Some badly made display panels will have uneven backlight distribution that leaves some portion of the display appearing less bright than other. And this is not the case with my BenQ unit. The BenQ VZ2350 has uniform brightness distributed across the screen. Another common issue with IPS panel is the IPS glow. It is present in all IPS monitors but the amount will vary in each unit. You can see the IPS glow around the corners and this will be more evident when watching dark content. And we don't have any control over this and have to compromise for its image quality. PLS is no different here and exhibits a lot of PLS glow than the IPS panel. One thing I would like to point out here, VA panels are less affected in this regard and very much capable of producing deep blacks in dark scenes giving a great movie experience. 14 millisecond response time on BenQ monitor seems to be a high number for hardcore gamers. But trust me, I didn't see any serious ghosting or motion blur in my entire gaming experience with this monitor. And if you are kind of person who prefer faithful color quality rather than faster response times, these are the two panels you should look for. Hardcore gamers who enjoyed the smoothness of 1 millisecond response time and 144Hz refresh rates can skip this BenQ monitor and will be well served with the faster TN displays. Coming to conclusion, be it a regular user or content creator or even a casual gamer, the BenQ VZ2350 is an excellent entry-level IPS 23-inch monitor available at a reasonable price. It looks good with sleek frameless design and renders superb image quality straight out of the box. It has got wide range of input ports and the matte surface is well enough to handle reflections, altogether with 3-year warranty. The only negative aspect that really concerns me is the neck portion of the stand is weak and that makes the screen to wobble even with slight vibration. Coming to panel selection, I see both IPS and PLS are identically the same in most aspects and I leave it to you to select any of these two panels based on price and features of your selected monitor model. Since both panel technologies provides the same great viewing angles and color representation, making it well suited for casual users as well as content creators. I am not disappointed with the gaming performance on both panels and I must say it is more than adequate for an immersive gaming experience. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you find this video useful and consider subscribing my channel for more future videos like this.